Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we will be discussing the problem. Find the equal partition index. Partitioning an array means to split an array along an element and such that it divides the array into two parts with some specific property. So we are saying, the question is saying actually that we have to partition an array into two parts such that the two parts have some specific property. And what is that property known as? First of all, the element which partis partitions the array is called as the partitioning element. The element which we are using to break the array into two parts, that element we are uh, calling it as partitioned element or partitioning element. So given an array, find the element partitioning along which the property is sum of elements to its left should equal to the sum of elements to its right. The partitioned element itself is to be excluded from both the sums. Return the index of the partitioned element. So we have to find such an index or such an element along which if we divide the array in two parts, all the elements in the left segment should have the sum equal to the all elements in the right segment or in the right side of the partitioned element. And if there is no such element where we can have this property, then we have to print minus one. So if I take an example, let's take a bigger array or maybe let's first take the sample array itself which is having four elements and the elements are one four two five so what is the partitioned element or what should be the answer if this is zeroth index first index second index third index if i partition my array along with zeroth index so what will be the left sum left sum does not have any element so it should be considered zero what will be the right sum right sum will be four plus two plus five all the sum of values so it will be 11 0 is not equal to 11 so zeroth index is not the partition index but what about first index can first index be the partition let's try let's try to partition the array along the first index that is all the elements in the left side will have some one all the elements in the right side will have some seven again not equal let's try to partition our array along the second index so if i partition around second index left sum will be 1 plus 4, 5, right sum will be also be 5. So 5 is equal to 5. Hence, the second index is the answer. Although second index contains value second, but we have to print the index. In the question, it is clearly mentioned that print the partitioning index, not the value. So we can just print 2 in this case. However, if I would have taken the array, let's say, maybe if I'm giving you the array 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, will there be any partitioning index or will there be any element where if we partition all the sum of left will be equal to right for this what will be the sum of left zero what will be sum of right two plus three plus four obviously it will not be equal to zero two plus three will be five five plus four will be nine zero is not equal to nine if i partition along the first index sum of left will be one which will not be equal to seven if i partition around this index left sum will be three right sum will be four again not equal if i partition along four left sum will be you can say 6, right sum will be 0. 6 is not equal to 0. So since there is no such index where I can partition such that the property holds true, we can say answer will be minus 1, the corner case. So we have to handle the corner case too, but that we can figure out later on. First main thing is how we will solve the normal test cases. For that, if I take an array, maybe 2, 1, 4, then let's take 6, then let's take 5, then let's take maybe 10, then let's take three if this is the array given to us we need to find the partitioning index at such an index where the sum of left elements is equal to sum of right elements and in order to solve it one of the approaches one of the brute force solution which i can think at least is let's just do what is asked what we will say is let's try to partition along zeroth index let's find the sum in the left portion let's find the sum in the right portion so i will run a loop from zero till the current index along which I am partitioning, let's say it is I. So I will run the loop from zero to I minus one. And second loop I will run is from I plus one till the last index, till N minus one index. I will check whether the left sum is equal to right sum. If it is, I is the answer. The current index is the answer. If not, then let's try for the next index. That is I index will get plus plus. I will try I as one. I will calculate left sum. I will calculate right sum. Check whether they are equal or not. If not, Try the next sum. So what will this brute force solution be? It will be a nested loops kind of approach where first loop will be to find every partition index or check for every element whether it is a valid partition index or not. 
and how to check it we will require inner loop that is left sum and right sum so it will overall be of two loops or you can say three loops but one inside there will be one outer loop and inside that outer loop there will be two inner loops one after the other so overall time complexity we can say will be n square only and since in n square we can say the time will be quadratic what about space in this approach we are just going to run a loop on the input array itself no extra space as such will be required so constant extra space no extra space as such but is this the most optimized solution obviously this is very good in terms of space but can we bet do better in terms of time complexity and the answer is yes but at what cost there will be a trade-off if we want to reduce the time complexity we have to increase the space complexity we have to take some extra space so see i will just give you an idea that how we can actually get to the solution or how we can think of it if i am let's say calculating the left sum for fourth index or maybe let's try for sixth index what will be the sum it will be 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 10 if i will calculate the left sum for the fifth index it will be 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 if I calculate the left sum for fourth index, it will be 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6. So can you see some elements, some are being repeated. If I already know the sum, let's say for fourth index, that is 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6. What it is? It is 3 plus 4, uh, you can say 7, 7 plus 6 is 13. Can I just use this 13 sum to calculate the sum for fifth index? That is left sum for fifth index left sum for fifth index will be 2 plus 4 plus 1 uh, 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 and already i have the sum for 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 which is 13 so just use it and add the new element which is 5 similarly for the blue for the blue sum or you can say for the sixth index left sum will be the sum of all these elements that is the yellow elements plus the new element at the fifth index so it will be nothing but all the sum of these elements are nothing but this 13 plus 5 which is 18 which we have already calculated if we have already calculated and stored it somewhere plus the new element 10 which will come out to be 28 so what are we actually going to do just use the previous sum to calculate the new sum if i know the sum of the sub array 0 to i i can calculate the sum of the sub array 0 to i plus 1 I, if I know the sub array of sum 0 to i plus 1, I can calculate the sub array sum for 0 till i plus 2. And what are these sub arrays known as when they are starting from 0th index? They are known as prefix sub arrays or prefix arrays. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a prefix array. Not only prefix, but same thing we have to do for suffix because we don't only need the left sum, but for every element we need the right sum also. So first let me just quickly create a left some array or you can say a prefix some array what will prefix some array store it will store all the left sum for all the values so zero index will store all the sum of the elements till zero index what is that sum we can say it will be zero zero index value only that is two only at first index sum of all these values two plus one so for, for now you can say array of zero plus array of one which is three but actually if i just say it will be two plus one that is this value plus this value both are same Either you can add these two or you can add these two. Both are same. But now, when you want to calculate the sub array sum from 0 to 2, you don't need to again calculate 2 plus 1. You already have the answer 2 plus 1 stored here. That is at prefix of i, prefix of 1. So in order to calculate prefix of i plus 1 or you can say prefix of 2, you can just say take this value plus the new value and store it here. 3 plus 4, it will be 7. And this is correct also. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. Next, 7 plus new value, 6 will be 13. Don't calculate 2 plus 4, 1 plus 4 again. Then again, for 5, don't calculate 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 again. They are already calculated, stored at 13. So just use this value, 13 plus 5, 18 is the new value. 18 plus 10, 28 is the new value. 28 plus 3, 31 is the new value. So these are the prefix array or you can say the prefix sums stored in a single 1d array same thing we are going to do for the suffix array so if i just quickly draw the suffix array let me just make this prefix array a little bit downwards and let's now do it for suffix what will be suffix the right sum array that is starting from the right side we will calculate the sum for each index what is the sum of all elements in the right side of it for this index sum of elements in the right side so if i let's say cal want to calculate the suffix sum for two second index it will be six plus five plus ten plus three 
So which sum can I use? Can I say if I already know the sum for second index, which is 5 plus 10 plus 3, just take this value and add it. Yes. So this time we have to travel from right side, not from left side. So we will travel in the reverse direction. Initially, when there is only one element, what will be the suffix sum in the right side? It will be only 3. Although you might say for six index, the right sum should be 0. But for now, we are including the current element. Although in the question, it is mentioned that whenever we are partitioning, don't include the partitioned element in both the sums. Exclude it in both the sums. But for now, let's see what will happen even if we include it. So for now, we are directly taking 3. 3 plus 10 will be 13. Now 13 plus 5 will be 18. 18 plus 6 will be 24. 24 plus 4 will be 28. 28 plus 1 will be 29. 29 plus 2 will be 31. So these are the suffix arrays and we have just traveled in the reverse direction. So what will be the time complexity to calculate the prefix array and the suffix array? As you can see a simple loop on the 1D array. So what is the formula? Prefix of i is nothing but the previous value of prefix that is prefix of i minus 1 or you can also write prefix of i plus 1 is equal to prefix of i plus the same array ith index. If I just show you 1 plus previous value of prefix 2 plus 1. 4 plus prefix value of previous index 3 plus 4. 6 plus 7 13. 13 plus 5 18. So take the previous prefix value and the current array value and store it in the new prefix value. What will be the formula for suffix? For suffix it will be instead of suffix of i minus 1 we will say suffix of i plus 1. For fifth index, we are taking the value from sixth index. For fourth index, we are taking the value from fifth index. So suffix of i will be suffix of i plus one plus the current array value. But there will be a corner case. If I will say for zeroth index, what is the sum? If I will take array of i, that is good. But what is prefix of array of i minus one or prefix of i minus one actually? Zero minus one is minus one index. We should take the value zero in that case. There is no minus one index. Similarly, for this index, what will be suffix of i plus 1? There is no suffix of i plus 1. There is no seventh index. In that case, also we have to take 0. So we have to take care of the corner case where suffix of i plus, i plus 1 does not exist. Or you can say i plus 1 is out of the range. Similarly, if prefix of i minus 1 does not exist. Or you can say it is out of the range. We have to take them 0 because empty array is 0. Now, once we have created both of these arrays, that is the prefix array, the suffix array, how we can use both of these arrays in order to check which element can be as a partitioned element. See, if I take this fourth index for your observation, can you say that the suffix value is equal to prefix value? 18 is equal to 18. Now, what is 18? This value 18 is 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5. This 18 is nothing but 5 plus 10 plus 3. Prefix is nothing but sum of all elements in the left, including the element. Right now, we have included it. Suffix is nothing but sum of all elements in the right, including the element. Although for partition, what should be the condition? 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 1 should be equal to 10 plus 3. Are they equal? Yes, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 6 is nothing but 13. This is also 13. 18 is equal to 18. 13 is equal to 13. Why? Because if I am saying in this array, in the left sum, if I will add the current element, similarly, if I will add the current element in the right sum, it will have no effect. If I am saying left sum is equals to right sum, the left sum plus the current value val will be equal to right sum plus current value val. I am just adding the current value in both the arrays, in both the sums. 5 is added in the left, 5 is added in the right. 13 plus 5 is 18. 13 plus 5 is 18. So we can just include the element also. It will not have any effect in the answer. And including the current element will actually make the job easier. It will make our code easier. Otherwise, we have to compare 13 with 13. That is prefix of i minus 1 with the suffix of i plus 1. Or you can directly compare suffix of i with prefix of i. Directly same index or previous index of prefix with the next index of suffix. You can compare anything. Better will be to compare directly the same indices because including the current element in both the subarrays or in both the prefix and suffix in both the left sum and right sum will not change the logic. And what will be the time complexity for this optimized approach? Calculating the suffix array will be linear. Calculating the prefix array will also be linear. And to check which index is pivot index, which index is partitioning index, just run a loop again and compare both the values, whether they are same or different. If they are same, that is the answer. So that will also take linear time. 
So overall time complexity will be linear and overall space complexity will also be linear in this case because we are creating two individual 1D arrays. So linear time complexity, linear space complexity will be the optimized solution using prefix and suffix concept. So let's write the instruction manual that is a pseudo code for this problem in milestone number three. So what we are going to do is we are going to create two arrays. So first we have to create a prefix array of size same n only and which is the input array size. Similarly, create a suffix array. And both of these arrays will be of course of the same data type as the input. So create long array that is of type long in case of uh, C++ or Java, it will be long in some other languages, it will be some other data type name, but you have to take 64 bit integers. <laughs> then what we have to do is initially all the elements for all the integers or all the indices will have zero value. Same in the prefix, same in the suffix. We have to store the prefixes sum. For prefix, we have to run the loop from left to right. So run a for loop over indices zero till n minus one. And every time what we have to do, just add the current value in the prefix and the previous prefix value. So apply the formula of prefix at i is equal to prefix at i minus one plus the array at i value. That, that is prefix of i will be prefix of i minus one plus array of i. But just make sure that if prefix of i minus one does not exist, then take it zero. So I'm just writing a note here that if prefix at i minus one does not exist, or maybe we can simply say if i minus one is less than zero or i is equal to zero, in that case, the i minus one will be less than zero. Then what we have to do is then prefix at i minus one should be zero, then we have to take this value as zero. That is, there is no previous prefix array. Same thing we have to do for suffix, but for suffix, we have to run a for loop from the last index over indices n minus one till zero. And formula will be suffix at i will be equal to suffix at i plus one plus array at i. And same thing that if the suffix does not exist, then we have to take it zero. But in this case, the suffix, when will it not exist? When the index is last index, because for last index, next index will be not there. So suffix at i plus one, in that case, we have to take them zero. Once we have created both of these arrays, now we can compare whether which index will have the same value for both the prefixes and suffixes. So I will run a loop, run a for loop again, over all indices, zero till n minus one, check if the prefix is the same as a suffix. If it is, then the index is the answer. Then we can say, if yes, then return the index. Otherwise, if we are not able to find any index, then what is the question saying? What we have to return if there is no partitioning element, we have to return minus one. So finally, after the loop is end, there is no partitioning element found, then return minus one. So this is the instruction manual and already discussed the time complexity will be n plus n plus n that is 3n which is still linear only and space complexity since we are going to create two extra arrays prefix array suffix array we will take linear extra space so in order to reduce the time complexity from brute force n square to optimize n we have to take extra space of linear so there is a trade-off we will be writing the code in java programming language so let's just directly use the instruction manual in order to write the code first thing what we need is to create a long prefix array so long array of prefixes and the array size will be n same thing we have to do for suffix so let's just first create the same array for suffix and for now what we are going to do is we are going to fill the values for prefix by running the loop in left to right order that is indices will run from 0 till less than n or 0 till n minus 1 and every time formula will be prefix of i is nothing but array of i plus prefix of i minus 1 prefix of i will be nothing but prefix of i minus 1 plus array of i but the note is if the index i is 0 then prefix of i minus 1 does not exist it should be taken as 0 so we can just compare whether i is 0 or not if i is 0 take the value 0 otherwise take this value that is don't go into index outer bound exception 
So we are able to take care of the note also. So first, let's just print whether the prefix array is correct or not. So we are going to use arrays dot to string and I will just pass the prefix array in it. And obviously the prefix array name is PREF. We should use the same name everywhere. And for now, let this return minus one so that there is some return type. So let's see whether the prefix array we are creating is being created correctly or not. Although there is some issue with the variable name still. We are using prefix, prefix, and the array name is ARR. And what is the error? Let's read the error. Cannot find the symbol i. Okay. So ith index is not there, but index name we should have is i. Instead of index, let's just have variable name as i. And let's run it again. So it is taking some time to run. And still there is some issue. The prefix array name is prefix, not prefix, but it is pref, only P-R-E-F. Let's see now if it is going to show me the correct output for prefix array. So for prefix array, it is being, giving me 1, 5, 7, 12 for this array. 1, then 1 plus 4, 5, then 1 plus 4 plus 2, that is 7, then 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 5, that is 12. So yeah, prefix array is correct. Same thing let's just do for the suffix array. So for suffix, let's just have the suffix array name as SUFF. We will run the loop in reverse order. That is index from n minus 1 going till 0, index minus minus. And the same thing just in reverse order. That is suffix of i is going to be nothing but suffix of i plus 1, not i minus 1, plus array of i. And now the corner case will be if the index is the last index, that is n minus 1. In that case, we have to take the value 0. So if index is n minus 1, take the value 0. Otherwise, take the value of suffix of i plus 1. So I'm using ternary operator to do this. So hopefully, it should also be correct. Let's just, for now, print the value of suffix arrays dot to string. Let's just print suffix array to confirm whether this is also correct or not. So again, taking some time to run. And we are getting 12, 11, 7, 5, 5, 5 plus 2, 7, 7 plus 4, 11, and then 11 plus 1, 12. So this is also correct. And finally, let's compare which index have the same value for prefix and suffix. That will be our partition index. So I will run a loop for all the indices. I will check which index have the values at prefix array and suffix array equal. So prefix of index, if it is equal to suffix of index, then we have to do what? We have to return that index. But if no such index is found, then we have to return minus one. So corner case should be, if there is no partition index, answer is minus one. That will also work correctly. So let's submit it to see if all the test cases, including the corner test case, which I just told is working fine or not. And as you can see, all the test cases are getting passed, even the corner cases. So what is the time complexity of this code? Since we are running a loop for n times, again running a loop for n times, again running a loop for n times, n plus n plus n is three times n, but it is still linear. Although you, if you wish, you can just reduce one number of loops by creating the prefix array after suffix and just comparing while running the prefix array itself. Why? Because when we are running for prefix, we are going from zero to n minus one. When we are running the loop for suffix, we are going from zero to n minus one. So we can just combine these two loops, but still time complexity will be linear only. The code will become a little bit smaller. And what about the space? Since we are taking two extra arrays, prefix and suffix, it is not in the input. The extra space complexity is also linear. So linear time, linear space, optimize the solution. And this is the solution for the problem. Find equal partition index. With that, we are done with the video. We will meet in a new video with a new problem. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.